Hello. The task force uh, will now come to order. Um, without objection, the chair is authorized <laughs> to declare a recess of the committee at any time. Without objection, members of the full committee, not on this task force, are authorized to participate in today's hearing consistent with the committee's practice. This hearing is entitled Robots on Wall Street, the Impact of AI on Capital Markets and Jobs in the Financial Services Industry. And uh, uh, Dr. Lopez de Prado, you're now recognized for five minutes to give an oral presentation of your testimony. Thank you, Chairman Foster, Ranking Member Laudermilk, and distinguished members of this task force. It's an honor to be asked to contribute to this committee today. As a result of recent advances in pattern recognition, supercomputing, and big data, today machine learning algorithms can perform tasks that until recently only expert humans could accomplish. An area of particular interest is the management of investments. For two reasons. First, some of the most successful hedge funds in history happen to be algorithmic. The key advantage of algorithmic funds is that their decisions are objective, reproducible, and can be improved over time. The second advantage is that the automation enables substantial economies of scale and cost reductions. Automated tasks include order execution, portfolio construction, forecasting, credit rating, and fraud detection. Financial AI creates a number of challenges for the over six million people employed in the finance and insurance industry, many of whom will lose their jobs, not because they will be replaced by machines, but because they have not been trained to work alongside algorithms. The retraining of these workers is an urgent and difficult task, but not everything is bad news. As technical skills become more important in finance than personal connections or privilege are bringing, the wage gap between gen genders, ethnicities, and other classifications should narrow. In finance, too, math could be a great equalizer. Retraining our existing workforce is of critical importance. However, it is not enough. We must make sure that the talent that American universities help contrib contribute and develop remains in our country. The founders of the next Google, Amazon, or Apple are this very morning attending a math or engineering class at one of our universities. Unlike in the past, odds are these future entrepreneurs are in our country on a student visa, and that they will have a very hard time remaining in the United States unless we help them. Unless we help them, they will return to their countries of origin with their fellow students to compete against us. On a different note, I would like to draw your attention to two practical examples of reg tech, that is the application of machine learning algorithms to regulatory oversight. The first embodiment of reg tech is the crowdsourcing of investigations. One of the most challenging tasks faced by regulators is to identify market manipulators among oceans of data. This is literally a very challenging task like searching for a needle in a haystack. A practical approach is for regulators to enroll the help of the data science community, following the example of Kaggle competitions or the Netflix prize. Accordingly, regulators could anonymize transaction data and offer it to the worldwide community of data scientists who would be rewarded with a portion of the fines levied by regulators against wrongdoers. The next time that financial markets experience something like the flash crash, this tournament approach could lead to a faster identification of potential market manipulators. A second embodiment of RegTech is the detection of false investment products. Academic financial journals are filled with false investment strategies as a consequence of practice overfitting. Financial firms offer online tools to overfit practice, and even large hedge funds fall constantly for this trap, leading to investor losses. One solution is to require financial firms to record all the practice involved in the development of a product. With this information, auditors and regulators could compute the probability that the investment strategy is overfit, and this probability could be reported in the fund's promotional material. Finally, I would like to conclude my remarks with a discussion of bias. Yes, machine learning algorithms can incorporate human biases. The good news is we have a better chance at detecting the presence of biases in algorithms and measure that bias with greater accuracy than on humans. The reason is that we can subject algorithms to a batch of randomized control experiments and recalibrate those algorithms to perform as intended. Algorithms can assist human decision makers by providing a baseline recommendation that humans can override, thus exposing biases in humans. As algorithmic investing becomes more prevalent, Congress and regulators can play a fundamental role in helping reap the benefits of this technology while mitigating its risks. 
Thank you for the opportunity to contribute to this hearing, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Um, Is the U.S. properly equipped to remain competitive in the financial services workforce? This question is to uh, Dr. Lopez de Pareto and to Ms. Fender. The U.S. is the leader in the financial services industry today. Um, my concern is that um, this leadership is being challenged by the fact that on one hand, um, we are not investing as much in AI as um, other countries. Um, and number two, the fact that we are educating our competitors. Uh, in my remarks, I mentioned that I'm very concerned that the innovators of the future are attending today a class in our universities, but they will not be allowed to stay. And as a result, yes, we are very competitive, and this competition, this, this ability to train these skills is going to turn against us if we are not able to retain this talent. Okay. Thank you. And the gentleman from Indiana, Mr. Hollingsworth, is now recognized for five minutes. Well, I appreciate each of you being here today and appreciate the chairman for holding this hearing. This is an important topic, something I've been really passionate about since arriving here in Congress. And Dr. Lopez de Prado, I appreciate your comments because the, what you have touched on is something that I have been an ardent believer in for a long time. And that is number one, that the big arm of the federal government isn't gonna stop the growth of this technology, isn't going to cease the investment in AI, either here or around the world. And while we can shape the context by which that technology flows, we are not gonna dam up and stop that technology. And so when people say job losses may result on account of this, right? Um, there's a lot of fear and a lot of desire to put an end to that and to stop that, but I like how you referenced a lot of training and retraining that may need to happen. Training individuals that are graduating from school to ensure they have the skills that are necessary in a 21st century workplace, but also ensuring that those that are already in the workplace have the opportunity to get the retraining to continue their competitiveness. And as we see further growth and development in AI, it will require more and more frequent retraining to stay ahead of that, to stay relevant in that field. That is a very competitive field, right? But the second thing you touched on is something I'm even more ardent about, um, a lot of ardor expressed, but is we educate a lot of kids in this country. We do higher education in this country better than anywhere else in the world. We bring a lot of talent into this country. We invest a lot in those kids, and then we politely ask them to leave at the end of their tenure here, right? That is embarrassing, that is idiotic, that is stupid, and I hate that. I wanna find a way to attract talent in this country and retain talent into this country. Um, not because I believe it's a zero sum game, but because I believe that this country can provide a crucible for technological development that you can't find elsewhere in the world. And I think that technology will benefit humankind overall, the world in the long run, and I wanna make sure we do that. So I really appreciate you touching on those topics, and I really appreciate that investment. 